Hey folks, welcome to this afternoon's session. Let me just see where we are and where we're facing. And let's just make sure we're sharing the right thing. Welcome to today's session. My name is Paul Rankin. Um, I am from FEDSAS, based in KZN I am at the moment, although in the modern world it doesn't really matter where one lives. Um, and today we are going to be talking in our Tech Talk um, Tuesday session, talking about post-corona schools. I won't let the, the label out the bag. I'll let Rion do that introduction. Um, but if there are, if there is anybody in the audience, please, or there are people in the audience that are coming through, we're just waiting for the numbers to come up. For those of you that haven't attended our sessions before, there's a QA and a box um, on the right-hand side, bottom right-hand side, and that's where you can type in any questions and let us know where you are. Um, yeah, after, well, I think we're sitting on session number 74 or something this year, and we're not going to talk about the weather, folks. Um, we had a little brief interaction about rugby results earlier in this session, which is also pretty irrelevant at the moment. Um, and yeah, today we are going to be talking about post-corona schools, which is a big topic. Um, maybe a bit early to start talking about it, but we've got to start having a look at the process. We are recording the session, so it would be available for everybody after the session. Those of that have registered and attended, and those that, that, that maybe didn't make the session, we'll also send it through to them as well. Um, so if you wouldn't mind just dropping something in the Q&A box, I see there's a little bit in the background there. We've got quite a number of panelists on board today. Um, we've also got some of our admin staff helping in the background, and we've got some of our provincial managers as well. Dus die lijst van ons provinciale bestuurders, um, ons is heel te maal tweetalig, so ons moet al tweetalig gebruik, recht dier die land van die Oostkap, not tot by die Westkap. Um, if you need to get hold of the provincial managers, please get hold of them. And most importantly, also take a note of Rian van den Berg's email address, tech at fedsas.org.za. Um, he's driving all the technology discussions and processes um, through in, in our organization as we operate from there. I'm going to stop sharing and hand over right away to Rian. Rian, I believe you visited briefly in parts of KZN. Um, I have to just share with you that you were the other side of the cold front. 34 degrees in Newcastle, and I was sitting in the Midlands at about 12 degrees yesterday. So great to see that you got back safely to Gauteng. Over to you, Rian. Yes. Thanks, Paul. Uh, goedemiddag allemaal, and by welcome from my kant of. It's Tech Talk at two again, and yes, the discussion is open. Should we make it later, and, and possibly when schools get busy, we, we might look at that. Today, we've got a full panel of... Um, well, we're starting with an ex-principal in Diep van Rensburg. We got uh, two principals, uh, primary school and high school principal uh, in different parts of the country, and then an SGB member as well. So, so we're going to be discussing how did school already change. As ons so vintie kan wees, as ek die woord vintie kan gebruik, kan ons al praat van post-corona, ander kant corona, skole, um, we don't want self rachmark for this. So I'm going to share my screen and just just take you through a little bit of a of a thinking that I want to uh, get us going into. And I'm assuming that you can sh see my screen because uh, it just went black on my side. So the Centre for Technology is always the frame for Tech Talk at uh, at two. And I got this picture just the other day. Um, two three years ago, we started talking, writing, speaking about. Uh, the class of 2030, which started grade one uh, in 2018, uh, 20, yeah, 2018, I think it is, 2019 possibly. So the grade R's of 2017 finished school in 2030. And the world we live in is changing so fast and so rapidly, and that's way before Corona, that we said, we've got to adapt to this rapid change of the world that we live in. Um, yeah. <sighs> maybe just to contextualize it, the iPad is only 10 years old this year, and it's possibly old news already, but it's only 10 years old, and we gotta look 10 years into the future if we wanna to get to 2030. And, and hopefully the Center for Technology gets schools to the thinking of 2030, because we're teaching the generation that's gonna go and study, and go and go and work in the modern workplace, and even that looks a lot different. Uh, we're talking about the future of work these days. So yeah. When I grew up, 1989, I think it was, um, Robin Williams was the schoolmaster in a movie called Dead Poet Society. And he possibly coined this phrase for a lot of people in my generation to say, seize today, carpe diem, seize the day, boys, make your lives extraordinary. And then uh, about 2000, 2001, I encountered a, a speaker on a um, church seminar that I attended. And he said, no, don't seize today, seize tomorrow. Carpe manana. And Leonard Sweet challenged 
with the writing in that book, I mean, he, he basically describes what we are going through now. Digital citizens who are digital natives, who are digital um, tourists or expats or, 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 or really not comfortable in, in this age that we're living in. And that was 20 years ago. So I just want to frame it and say, we're talking about the future. Let's think Corona, but let's think pre-Corona, what's already changed. And let's think post-Corona and the school of the 2030s. And on our panel today, I'm really uh, happy to have uh, Duke van Rensburg that's going to share with us his thoughts on post-Corona school. But it's basically got nothing to do with Corona. It's just good lessons out of Corona. So the Center for Technology is looking for solutions. We're always going to present solutions to school. We're going to help you navigate through the 21st century. Ons is in the roaring 20s van die 21ste eeuw. Nie van die 20ste eeuw nie. We're in the second fifth of the 21st century. And we've got to navigate COVID and also navigate post-COVID. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Just as a reminder, all our previous TED Talks are on YouTube. If you missed today, it will be there. Previous ones, you must go there. The budget cycle is on for most schools, so possibly change the mindset already and, and, and use the e-magazine that might, uh, if, if Paul Rankin could help us possibly put that, um, uh, the, the link to the e-magazine for the Center for Technology, Tech Talk e-magazine in the link. And yes, uh, we're going to look at some other processes. We're always connected to the Department of Basic Education, but let's look at some of it. And Dupa, I know you're going to address some of these. So please share, us, uh, share with us your thoughts, uh, acclaimed, uh, Retired principal from Lifbron Academy, winner of the National Teaching Awards, Lifetime Achievement Award last year. Uh, Dupe, if you can open your mic and your, your uh, camera for us, uh, you can take the stage. I'm going to stop sharing now and welcome and thank you for sharing with us. Uh, Dupe, I can't see you yet. Ah, say, thank you so much. Welcome, Dupe, and gesels graag met ons. Well, thank you, Rian. Uh, good day to all webinars. Globally, research highlighted different points of view when looking at the possible post-corona schools. However, all scientists and commentators agree on one point. Many aspects of school life have to change to adapt the new normal. With each disruption, maybe an pandemic, weather changes, storms or political wars, Adaption to the new circumstances has to take place to survive. Changes after the disruption will also be easier than before. Although scientists differ on the issue of how precisely schools will function post-corona, this webinar will focus on the trends and aspects most of them agreed on. The pre-corona school, looking at the status quo, most researchers agree that the face-to-face -face classes will stay, although they criticize the content and assessment model. They value the teacher's physical presence and intervention with their students, as well as the socializing between students as a priority. The role of teachers as caretakers in a safe environment is critical to the parents, enabling them to continue with their essential jobs. Face-to-face -face education will remain. Playing, like in sport, formal or informal, practical exploitation and experimenting, problem solving and people skills developing, as well as collaboration among students globally are essential. Uh, to get, engage every learner into above mentioned essentials, the length of the school day need to include an hour or maybe an extra hour. The content driven curriculum needs to transform from informative sessions to challenges. Finding content to improvise, to do strategic planning, to prepare for a future career, to present to fellow learners, and collaborate to find answers to questions and problems. The school that wants to survive will have to differentiate and customize their curriculum and activities to benefit the learner and not only the group. 
Private companies and schools have to collaborate to enhance teaching anywhere, anytime. Customized learning for individuals that wishes to engage in online learning, setting a free zero rated, which is questionable at this stage, a platform with quality content for these learners. The schools will have to administrate this collaborative intervention by providing maintenance and reports to this partner or company, as well as good discipline. To enable above mentioned collaboration, governing bodies need to budget and set up a techno team with an CIO, and uh, I lent this, I borrowed this from uh, Rian. Uh, it can mean a chief info officer, a chief integration officer, or a chief innovation officer to sustain such intervention. Rian's eertijdschrift is a skatkus van ideas in producten waar na so'n technospan kan kyk om te verseker dat al het allemaal COVID onderrug nog kan plaasvind om die school by tijdspan dier het aan connectiviteit. Een leder onderwijsplatform, harde en sachte ware, as ook vir koordierende opleiding aan personeel en leders. Other trends uh, schools will have to deal with. Lockdown showed us the importance of manufacturing our own products. Countries which outsource the manufacturing of essential products to benefit from cheap labor had to bring the processes back. Schools therefore needs to emphasize the vocational subjects as well as the practical thereof. Educational learners in an interconnecting way. Isolated issues and actions does not exist anymore. We need to understand this interrelatedness and navigate across boundaries to leverage their differences and work in a globally collaborative way. Redefining the role of the educator, the notion of the educator as a knowledge holder who impart wisdom to their learners is no longer fit for the purpose of a 21st century education. With students being able to gain knowledge through a few clicks of their mobiles or other devices, we will have to redefine the role of the teacher as a lecturer. This means that the role of educator will me need to move towards facilitating young people's development as contributing member of society. Teaching life skills for the future. In this ever-changing environment, young people require resilience and adaptability. Skills proving to be essential to navigate effectively throughout this pandemic. Looking into the future, some of the most important skills that employers will be looking at will be creativity, communication and collaborative skills, alongside empathy, and emotional intelligence, and being able to work across lines of differences to harness the power of the collective through effective teamwork. Learners need to attend robotics and coding classes. Liquidity, schools cannot afford to have any debt and should be able to survive financially for at least six months while the school fees drop because of the disruption. Cashless, it became too dangerous to work with cash at the school. Social responsibility, every school should engage into projects to support their surrounding community. Scale of the economy, enlarge your footprint, become a regional or a micro school and share your resources with your region, your province and even your country with the state of the art technology you budgeted for, to run a system to the benefit of others and to add profit for your school community. Find partners from the corporate world to fund your proje projects. Specialized departments, uh, schools need to set up specialists for every activity, be it financial, sport, culture, career guidance, technology, academics, learner support, 
discipline, marketing, human resources. Second best is not, not good enough anymore. You've got to specialize in everything. Ongoing training in this ever-changing world. Teachers need ongoing training. Attend national and international seminars, webinars, as well as weekly training on hard and software. The profile and needs of modern millennium, millennial clients will pay for the, they will pay for the services, but do not mess up. Quality accommodation, such as hostels, classrooms, top sports facilities, and human capital is unquestionable. One, they need a one-stop service, all educational service on one premises. For them, time is vital and success is priority. Please contact me at dupvanrensburg at gmail.com if you need any uh, information. Uh, there's a lot of extra information on this. God bless and over to you, Rian. Thank you, Dup. I, I want to pick up on one or two things. You, you, you let it slip by that there's a big focus on communication. You let it slip by that there's a big focus on the skills of the 21st century, which includes collaboration and creativity, um, critical thinking, uh, the problem solving. And then you also let a big nugget slip by, and I want to reiterate that. Understanding each individual's personalized learning journey. And I think that's critical. Although technology gives us scale, it also gives us data about each individual uh, and, and how we can touch each individual learner with his or her own learning DNA. And I think that's critical. So Dup, thanks for that. So the more we expand and get more tech savvy, the more personalized it's going to be. Uh, so yeah, thank you for that. Dup. Please um, pop a few questions into the Q&A box if you want to chat with, with Dup later on. Uh, you can probably look at those whilst the other speakers are speaking, but we'll have a Q&A session at the end. So uh, Dup, bye, thank you for that. We, we're going to go into a, a next session. And as um, Dup was talking, uh, it was very relevant, and I didn't uh, put the, the speakers together in the same way, but he said that we've got to budget differently, we've got to think differently, we've got to innovate. And a very nice story that I came across is Hatia Esdros Day. Um, Arthur, if you can open your, your mic and your uh, camera, I want to welcome you to the stage this, uh, this afternoon and to the podium. Uh, Arthur, you guys did something amazing pre-COVID uh, and you call it your innovation center. I'm not going to steal your thunder. I'm just going to lead in and say, tell us why you did it, what you did, and what is the effect of that? Um, yeah, help us out. Uh, how did you go into the future? Thank you, uh, Rian. And uh, Rian, thank you for the opportunity and also for Fetch us. Um, and I'm so glad that Duke actually well, spoke before me uh, because everything that he said actually fits exactly in where we started with this innovation center. Uh, when we start doing the innovation center, and I want to show some, uh, I'm, I'm going to share a screen all, also on it, uh, if I may, if I can just get that on. Um, Right. Um, you know what, uh, Adrian, when we started, we said all the things that Dup actually mentioned about the critical thinking, the problem solving, the creative, the innovative, the teamwork, we said we must do something to, to benefit so that the school can benefit and especially the kids can benefit from this. And uh, we got a project manager and Anna Marie Andra is also, was the project or is the project manager. And we call it the ITP lab. That's the idea to project lab. And we started, and you can see the photo on the right hand side. That is exactly where we started. It was, it was vehicle garages. And on the left hand side, that's how it looks inside now. But we, we start with the STEAM education, with the science, the technology, the, the engineering, uh, the arts, and the maths. And, and that. Author, author yes, sorry. We're not. See, we're only seeing the opening slide of your slideshow. We're not seeing the the, the pictures. So, so just advance the. Uh, Why don't you the sharing? If Is you, it like that? If you just Is share it like that. No, if you just go share again. So click on the share screen and then go share again and pick up the presentation that's in um, audience mode. Um, 
like that. Uh, swap that, yeah, the top one there. Yeah, it, there we go. Is it fine? That's great. Okay. So what we, what we said to each other is we must do something that the kids benefit from and also that, that the country benefits from. Benefits from. So, and, and that includes all the thinking and the innovation center start with that good communication skills, the analytic approach, the critical thinking, everything that Duke actually said to us in his speech. So we said, all right, what we're gonna do is we want to, to put the kids together and uh, we want to play with robotics. We want to play with the, the stereo balls. We want to play with the drones. And uh, we also want to go to robotics and uh, also participate in the, in the competitions. But that wasn't the main idea here. The main idea was to get the, the kids the advantage to do coding and to do with the EB3, you will see there on the picture as well, with the Lego, uh, the Mindstorm when they do the programming. And that actually started very, very well at the beginning of this year. And then we also start with a, uh, uh, a lab where we actually visit uh, the University of, of, of Northwest and they helped us putting this together. So what we started doing and we said, if we're going to the engineering field and the maths and the art, we also combined it with our technical subjects. So the technical subject is mechanical, the civil, the electrical side, and also the engineering uh, graphics and design. And we actually got hold of, of a program, SolidWorks, and SolidWorks actually uh, helped the kids to put their ideas to a project. Now, if you look at the next pictures, uh, you will see the 3D printer, and then you will see also there's some of the, the projects that they actually design on SolidWorks. And then we also, during COVID, design our own masks for, and we actually hand it out to the department. So the whole thinking, uh, Rian, and, and you asked me why, was actually to say to the kids, we wanted to do something di different. A guide on the side, and we also got a, a, a student that was coming to give the classes, and we asked the department, can we take one period of uh, the technology side? And they give, gave me the permission, and we start with this. And I must tell you, we've also started with the robotic clubs uh, after school, so where we get involved with the primary schools. So now it's, <laughs> it's actually going so big. Uh, and yes, we can make a, use it as a marketing because all the, the, the primary skills, uh, school kids, they want to get involved in this. So we're very excited about this. And um, then we start looking at, at the other subjects as well. So you will see on the left hand side, uh, the VR, the, the virtual reality glasses that we've got, we use it in, in life science and biology. And then at the bottom, we've got an, a robotic arm that we use and, and, and also, uh, again, with the Northwest University, they help us doing this programming and they actually, <laughs> they help us a lot. And then Anna-Marie uh, went out to Ford and you will see there is a three, uh, D held hand scanner. Now they denoted one like that. So that means if we got a part or a, a, a piece of, of project that we want to uh, do on a 3D printer, we can scan it and then afterwards put it in SolidWorks and design the, uh, the project and then we can print it. So on, on one of the pictures that I've showed you uh, was one of the uh, the students, what is it? The krukke, it gebreek, and it ons die, sommer een pauze, het, 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 het hulle gehelp, en ons het gedesign, en hulle, hulle kon die, kon die uh, gedeelte van die ding net al print. So, yeah, the crutches, the yeah, yeah, medical that's crutches. It, that's okay. it. So, Rian, what must I tell you about this? Uh, I think the, the, the big in, uh, thing is to embrace the technology inside all of the other subjects, so that we can see in maths, why are we doing this? When we play with the stereos ball, we work with degrees. They must actually do the coding to see where they're going to. So we want to, to get everybody participate in all the other subjects. 
En dit het vir ons ongelooflik, uh, ja, dit, dit is exciting tye, dit is vir ons lekker tye. Uh, and I must tell you, if you go to our website, uh, we busy with a new project that we actually put the, the whole innovation center uh, on a 3D uh, virtual tour. So you can get into the classroom, you can go and look where the kids are sitting, you can see all the... So that's that's exciting. And, and I think uh, that's what we wanted to do. And um, right. I, I wanted to give also on a, on a Maurice, if there's anybody that wants to say something or ask something, uh, they can go to the ITP lab at RTS Day. That's here, that's here, and that, that's Anna Marie. Um, right. That's in a, in a nutshell, Rian, and, and, and I think you can hear me. Yeah. I'm very, very excited about this whole thing, and it's, and it, and it's just going bigger and bigger. Isn't, isn't a school always an innovation center? Isn't it like tautologie? Uh, uh, what's, what's the Afrikaans or, or the language um, uh, term to say that we're, we're calling something double. It's like calling it a round circle. A school is an innovation center, but you've just highlighted the fact that you're innovating and you're making it a play, uh, a place to play, a place to dream, a place to create, uh, and, and a place to fail, to have a sand, sandbox environment, to try and try. And I love the 3D printing and I love what you're saying. So well done. Arthur, just to qualify, you're not the richest school in the country and you're not in the biggest city in the country. Am I right? <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. And I must tell you, uh, we're in Worcester and uh, most of the stuff that you will see on the pictures and, and when you go through the, the 3D video, you will see that there were sponsors and, and, and it's exactly what you also see. And, and, and another nice thing about it, Rion, is all our grade eight and nines are, are doing this robotics, let's say innovation center. So ons het een prioriteit weggeneem en gesê, luister, ons kan net by technologie in gooi en, en dis dan gratis. So die graad 8 en 9 is gaan allemaal een prioriteit dier die week gaan dier die hele oh, center. Well done. Arthur, thank you so much. Uh, anyone in the audience, please pop Arthur a, a Q&A question there so that we can discuss it later on. But well done. I'm super excited with you guys. I took the 3D tour on the website. Uh, it's amazing to see what they're doing. Uh, I think the lesson for me is they did. Whether it's right or wrong, pro probably still add to it. But they took action and they did. The next school, they took some action. Uh, and I hope that Mark is uh, on the list. Uh, I got confirmation that he's in, in the panel. And, and I want to um, welcome him to the stage, Mark Mathieu. Is the principal at Law School Frasco Primary. Mark, you can open your... Uh, there we go. He's on his cell phone, so he's very mobile. <laughs> and, and we trust and hope that the internet goes. I think it's uh, power issues, load shedding or something. Mark, why don't you let you someone on scale, but please share with us. Uh, you guys also took the bull by the horns and you've got a specific context as well in, in Frasco. Uh, what did you guys do the moment Corona hit and, and what has it taught you? Yes, uh, uh, good afternoon, noon, Paul, and thank you for the opportunity to be here this afternoon. Um, yeah, maybe just to, to, um, to start off, um, uh, we are not uh, a very rich school. Um, uh, we've got uh, middle class parents, and uh, uh, most of our kids are traveling at least 35 kilometers to school. Um, from uh, rural parts of, of, of Mpumalanga. Um, so it's, it was a big challenge to us to start off with, but um, we started. And uh, we are so glad that we actually started and uh, that we can also now help other people to, to start. So what we have done from the beginning of this, we have a behoefte bepaling gedoen. We have a bit of our ourselves and we have a survey uitgestuurd. Net om een te kyk, hoe lyk die data, gaan ouders data heen, gaan kinders, uh, gaan haar gadgets wees, gaan haar cellfone en, en um, um, iPads en sikke goede wees vir die kinders uh, om te gebruik. Wat ons achtergekom het is, 90% van ons kinders gebruik wel um, cellfone uh, en uh, die groter meerderheid van hulle gebruik ook hulle ouderse cellfone om, uh, om uh, online te kom en, uh, en om so'n bykie um, die werkies te doen, ons vir online gee. Maar het was baie belangrijk vir ons, en ek denk, jy het, het, jy het mooi aangeraak, Paul, is communicatie. Um, ons moes met ons ouders communiceren. toe ons sien, daar is een behoefte, 
om, uh, om bij te uh, online te gaan. Uh, toe kom ons achter nie, ons sal, ons, sal, ons sal dieper in het moet gaan, ons was, ek denk soos meeste van die skole, was ons maar so'n beetje met die broek op die knieën gevang, toe ons uh, toe corona ons tref, maar ons het, ons het nie, ge, ons het nie ge, kan ek tussen die Engelsman sê, gepanik nie, ons het, um, ons het kop gehou en ons het uh, begin met WhatsApp lesies, en toe van daar af toe het ons oorgegaan na uh, platform, um, en ons platform wat ons gekies het was toe op die oude Google Classroom, Maar ons communicatie met die ouders en toe met die weerlichaam en toe um, uh, uh, om die basis communicatie eers achter die lijn te kry, was, was baie belangrijk geweest. En um, die weerlichaam het, het goed gedink en gesê, nee, ek moest probeer dit, hulle ondersteun dit. En dan kyk ons wel vir het ons, ek sal net so aan die einde, sal ek ook vir hulle sê, wat die voordele was, wat ons uit die um, online uh, klasse uh, um, uh, gepit. So, uh, toe ons nou uiteindelijk besluit op ons platform, toe het ons een richting van ons gegaan, en uh, wat, so ons het baie het staat gemaakt op, op mense, op ander mense, ander skole, wat al, wat so bietje al te doen gehad het met dit, ek het baie ja. gepraat met mense, wat oor see school gehou het, wat teruggekom het, yes. Maak, ek, ek gaan jy goeie vraag, wil jy nie Kon ons jou video probeer afsit nie, ek denk die selfentoring se, se sein raak sleg, so sit jou video af en dan hoor ons net jou audio, dis ok vir die laaste minuut of twee, thanks man. Kan jy jou video afsit en kyk ons of ons beter klank kan kry. Kan jy dit beter? Klink so. Kan jy dit my nou hoor? 100. Ok, bak gaan. Goed, so, um, dit was belangrijk vir ons om, uh, om die personeel aan boord te kry, weer eens communicatie en opleiding. Ek kan, nie, ek kan nie stress hoe belangrijk dit is om, uh, om die opleiding te doen, zodra je besluit het, jy gaan nou in die richting gaan om die mense op te leiden. En ek het gehoor van die ander sprekers, het ook gepraat oor opleiding. Maar wat baie lekker was, is om selfs te gesien het, hoe selfs ons babyboomers op die personeel aan boord gekom het, en hoe trots hulle op hulle self voel, om te kan sê, hulle bied online lesse aan. Um, dan wil ek, Ek is amper klaar hier, so ek wil net sê, ek wil afsluit amper met um, dier te sê, uh, moet nie bang wees om te begin nie, moet nie bang wees om te vraag nie, en deel inlichting met mekaar. En dan net so paar goeities wat ons geleer het uit hierdie ding uit, ons, um, ons het uh, papierloos begin gaan, ons is, um, vir ons ouders is meer betrokken, um, hulle kan van die huis al werk, personeel, uh, en kinders wat kom op die tijd het, kom lekker van die huis af werk tot dusver. Ons monitering in hierdie laaste twee was eindelijk vir my baie uh, um, inzichtgevend gewees. Is ons monitering en evaluering, uh, hoeveel ou nie nou uit jou klas uit te doen nie, jy kan nou by jou huis sit en, um, en, en dit doen, uh, alhoewel dit data vat, maar ons het reeling gemaakt met ons, met ons personeel. En dan ook, laatstens, een groot positief vir my wat hier uitgekom het was, personeel ontwikkeling. So ja, uh, dit is ons, ons um, story in a nutshell, maar my, my, um, my uh, wat ek wil oordra vandag is om te sê, begin, moet nie waag nie, begin en moet nie bang wees nie, pad die eerste trappie en begin, en um, as jy bang is, vraag. Uh, as baie goed wat jy kan kry op uh, YouTube, en um, um, die internet is vol in lichting, en daar is baie skole wat ook bereid is om te help. Um, aangezien ek gaan sikkel miskien met my connect- connectie, uh, ek sit by een ander skole op hierdie stadium, omdat ons uh, in gras op vandag geen kracht het nie. Um, as, as ek nie uh, by julle is, tegen die einde nie, is mense baie welkom om my uh, te lei, Hulle kan vir my een uh, likeje gee op 082-491-3789. Ek herhaal, 082-491-3789. Ons is, um, as die Engelsman sal sê, fortunate, is fortunate enough. Ons kon al een paar ander skole gehelp het om op die been te kom. Uh, ons wat in ons omliggende gebied is. En ons, ons help graag. Baie dankie. Dankie, Maak, uh, waardeer dit. Dankie dat jy jou uh, nommer deel met ons. Uh, ons sal jou e-postadres ook dalk net deel, uh, saam met die dokumente wat uitvind. Thanks so much for sharing that with us. 
Uh, I'm going down to the, uh, the low felt or the slow felt in a week's time for a little bit of a break. Uh, and and uh, yeah, maybe I can just swing by. But well done. The lessons that I've seen you talk about is being gutsy. So be brave. Um, fix the problem and then do something. I think you can go into analysis paralysis and try and get the 100% answer, but too late. So you took action. And then the team, the people, training, getting them on board. I smile when you say uh, the baby boomers. I'm turning 50 tomorrow for, <laughs> for the folks that don't know. So I'm the youngster in, in, in some audiences, but, but even older people than I are adapting and, and finding it. And that's our next story. So Fricky, I see that you've opened your mic. Uh, we've got someone from Limpopo, uh, far north. Uh, Fricky is one of the SGB members at Law School uh, Bosfeld. So Fricky, tell us what your story is. You guys ran a range of a whole series of um, parent evenings. So you're embracing another stakeholder into the, into the field. So, so tell us what you did, how you did it, just introduce the team. And, and what the effect of that was. So thank you for sharing that with us. And you can also mix between Afrikaans and English like the other speakers do. Thanks so much. Thanks, Ron. Yeah, and um, actually all that I can do is just to introduce the uh, awesome team here at the, at the school. I'm Fricky van Amoura. I'm actually only a member of the school governing body that had to endure and go through all the challenges that our teaching staff went through during this lockdown, um, and I think even post-corona. Um, Mark has mentioned it, Dupa has mentioned it, and I think from my side, I'm ex extremely proud and glad to be part of the Borsi family here, to make sure and to see this transgression, what our teachers went through at, at the school. Mr. Loki Pretorius, he's our principal, and Sonia from Deveta, she's um, head of academics, and also at uh, Yagguf, um, sorry for leaving, um, Getting not getting the English there, but I'm not going to talk um, a lot this afternoon. I'm actually going to hand it over to our principal just to give you the large overview and also why they started with this. And, and then Sonia will maybe give you some insights on what's happened on the parents and also on the evenings. Loki, over to you. Thank you, Fricky. Um, good afternoon to all. Thank you, Rian, for the opportunity to share our experience of hosting virtual parent meetings with you. Circumstances worldwide changed overnight and the school environment was no exception to this. One thing that remained unchanged, however, was the need of parents and teachers to communicate with each other about academic progress of the learners, the state of mind, as well as general school information. Here at Law School Bosa Primary, the staff and the governing body have joined hands to, to address this need by arranging Zoom meetings with our parents. Um, our school is a parallel medium school with Afrikaans and English as languages of learning. Therefore, we made a practical arrangement of facilitating these meetings by grade and language. For example, Monday evening will be the grade one English learners, and then on the Tuesday, grade one Afrikaans. The question of success or not, um, I think it was very successful considering that it was a very strange and a new exp experience for educators and parents. Um, although we did not reach 100% of our parents, the interaction between the school and our parent community was meaningful. And I'm grateful to mention that we had 80% attendance from our grade three group. The challenges that we experience um, in our school environment, there will always be, an always be an inequality in our parents' means with regards to internet and data access. Um, secondly, internet connections were not always as stable as we would like them to be. And finally, um, parents fear for the unknown, um, but I'm sure that the second round will be even more successful. Um, that's all from my side, Rian. Thanks a lot. I'd now like to ask Mrs. Sonia van Deventer to elaborate a bit more on the how of our parent evenings. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pretorius. Um, I would like to show you an example of the way we did our parent evenings. I'm just going to turn off my video to be safe, Rian. 
Thanks. Okay, we tried to keep, to keep it simple so that all that took part could feel comfortable with the new normal. That's our teachers as well as our parents. Every teacher received a duty list prior in time to prepare for this meeting or the meetings. My main aim is to keep our school's academical work up to date. So at our virtual parent evenings, we use the same structure with grade three to R, R to three, and also for grade four to seven. Mr. Pretorius started each evening after the host, Mr. Fricky van Amerbe, explained the procedures to our parents. Our school safety officer, Mrs. Karen Meyers, addressed all concerns about the learner's health and safety every single night. And she explained what the parents should do to assist the educators. For every grade, the subject teachers were available to inform the parents about the trimmings of the curriculum due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Tips on how parents can assist their children at home were given by each educator and our parents found it very helpful. And at the end of the meeting, parents were given the opportunity to ask questions and any uncertainties were discussed. Mr. Fricky van Amerbe conducted the meetings every night or concluded the meetings every night and acknowledged the parents' interest in their children and our school. I must tell you, our parents found these meetings very helpful and they messaged us afterwards and it's really the way forward for every school, I can really tell you to go this way. Thank you, sir. If there's anyone that would like to ask a question, I will be able to answer it. Thank you, Sonia. Donkey, Fricky, Donkey, Loki. Uh, uh, I'm stoked. I'm impressed. Uh, I'm happy. Uh, and, and, and not because we're showcasing schools that are trying to be necessarily, you know, running some sort of a league against another school and to win. But that we looked at the problems of our time and we faced those with the solutions of our time. None of what anyone has been talking about, I'm going to ask the whole panel to open up their, um, their uh, videos if they want to and, and, and just discuss and, and maybe throw a question or two out. We've, we've had some questions. But what I've seen is action. What I've seen is a lot of courage and bravery to say, let's just do something. What I've seen is a lot of team. And, and I think that's the message that needs to go through to, to our other member schools. I think this belangrijk let ons besef, as a brug hier tussen die, die ouders op die beheerlichaam en die schoolbestuur. Academie is belangrijk. Ek is self um, My kids' journey at school is important to me. And to get communication is just, just sets me in, in, in a new frame of mind. So well done to all of you. I've got a question and maybe Dupe, you can lead this one out. Uh, you looked at a very philosophical um, approach to systemic change. And there's a difficulty, and, and I hope I'm not throwing you under the bus now. <laughs> you can an Afrikaans answer as you will do. Can a school, can a school be creative, like Arthur, inside the fundamentals of a bigger system with caps and timing and hours and that sort of thing to still embrace the future that includes fourth industrial revolution, 3D printing as part of maths, um, innovation and changing, changing the way we, we get to the outcome, uh, even though we're in this cornerstone fundamental big system of teaching a set curriculum, teaching to the test, um, unpersonalized mass group scheduled uh, curriculum. How do we fit in as a school uh, to possibly do something like Arthur did? But what's your thoughts on that? And then I'm going to ask Arthur to also do that, answer that one. Yeah, Rian, uh, you're quite right. Uh, there's no time for that. Uh, people tend to specialize in everything. If you're uh, educated to these days with the SCAPS documents, uh, you've got, got to be a content driver. Uh, which I don't prefer. I think we've got the wrong system in South Africa. We should have been uh, f further from that now. Uh, but being in a very, very conservative environment, uh, which is the schools, I think they they've worked with, with an, uh, Blackboard for 200 years. You've got to get out of it. And how to get out of it is to specialize, to get specialized people in, to get specialized uh, service providers in. You've got to do that, you know. And, when you, when you count 
uh, and, and, and you um, budget for this, you will say, well, it's too expensive, but in a letter, it's not that. You must add up correctly and see what you gain when you get the service provider that's a specialist to uh, do the innovating part or help you with that. Uh, and it's, uh, you, I don't want to be too long. I just want to say this. Uh, you've got uh, to have your own specialist as well. Like the CIO, it's very, very important for certain people in the school not to be troubled with nitty gritty, but to focus on the real issues of innovation and leading the way and showing the way. Uh, I think that's the way to go. Other, uh, the rest of the teachers, mm -hmm. they can't go there, but you've got to help them and train them and uh, like the people said today. Yeah. Good stuff. Arthur, you want to add to that? My question is, how do we fit, how do we fit the new world, the manana, seizing tomorrow into today with yesterday's structure? Uh, you did it. You, you, you're taking some hours away from other subjects, but you're still getting to the same learning outcomes if, if I read it right. So, so did you get that right? Yeah. Rian, ek gaan, ek gaan hier in Afrikaans mm. antwoord. Is welkom. Uh, ek, ek denk, eerstens gaan jou personeel wat jy het op jou, op jou, op jou span gaan moet jullie dan verstaan. En, en ons afskop was eerst gewees om in kleine groepjes te gaan, om te gaan kyk hoe werk die drums, om te gaan kyk hoe werk en, en wat sy inpak het die sfeere worlds wat ons doen met coding, waar kom dit by wiskunde en die ander vakke in? En, en skielik het die personeel gesien, al hierdie goed is eindelijk vat mekaar sy hande. En toe ons dit eers recht krijg, ons sê, oké, okay, ek denk ons is nou op die vlak om te gaan om so in een fasiecentrum te kry. Uh, Rian, jy het net nou gepraat van, van mense op sekere ouderdom, en ek denk, baie van ons en myself uh, is bang om hierdie, om hierdie sprong te neem. Uh, ja, en doep is heel te marre. Hierdie goed is koos geld, maar ek kan jylle nou verseker, as ons het ons, uh, by voorbeeld die EV3's, het ons nie een maand net gekoop nie, ons het, ons het er heel in gaan maak, ons het gaan sê, right, kan ons hierdie oor vier of vijf maanden afbetaal, en sodra die, 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 uh, die club in die gang kom, is daar een klein bykie vir ons wat inkom, want even skielik begin die ding momentum kry, maar ek denk die momentum kom van jou personeel wat moet inkoop en hulle moet eers gebeet het, hoe werk hier die drone en wat kan hy doen en, en hoe werk hier die EV3 is, weet, van ons personeel het daar Lego goed huis toe geneem en hulle was so excited toe hulle terugkom en sê maar die goed werk en, en ek denk dis, ek denk dit was die beginpunt van van ja, wat die ons momentum ons gekryd Yeah, so you need to wait for the stelsel. We don't need to wait for the system no. to change. We can change our system. At it. Um, so you're connecting a few dots. You're saying it's the teachers, it's the curriculum, uh, it's the budget. As I do we've got a budget for things. I want to add an extra element to that. It's the parents. And Fricky, you're the only. Well, I'm also a parent, but <laughs> not in my capacity as a parent yet. But you're the parents on the on on the panel, and you help bridge the gap to make the parents part of this journey to understand what's what's changing at school. Um, how important do you feel it is that, that parents are involved in understanding the vision, uh, being not over communicated to, but being shared clear communication on what the school is doing and how they're doing it. Uh, and, and, and how does it affect the talk? I call them the parkeerterrain mafia, the parking lot mafia, the bri mafia. How do parents feel? How do parents feel if, if there's something good coming out of that? Well, I think, and I will also maybe let Loki also answer from the school side, but from us at the governing body, and it's exactly as you mentioned, the parkeer terrain mafia. Without having the buying of all our separate gangs, and I call them the coffee gangs sometimes here, and that's the moms, if we don't have their buy-in, nothing will succeed. It doesn't matter how big and how powerful the drive is from the, from the mm -hmm. teachers. If I hear yeah, eight hours per day and also over the weekends how bad my school is at, at, at home, I will take that mentality to school and, and also start taking that out on, the, on my friends at school, on my teachers at school. And yes, I will most likely become a problem child as well. And that's not what Loki wants at the end of the day. But parent buying, parent support is actually, you can say it's the foundation with the willingness from the teachers to take that, that step forward. It's like the water in the cement, the rocks in the um, concrete. 
without having that, your foundation will at one point in time crumble. It's just making sure that the castle you're building will stand this test of time. Loki, from your side, maybe from a strategic point of view, anything that you would like to add? Thank you for the I think all three of the speakers have precisely said what my thought is. is um, all is begin by the, the will to this to will do and to will to change and to try. I think people can on 100 periods think how come I can't specific thing to do. But I think I need to have one reason for how come I can do it. And I think this will be the world to change. And this is in this uncertain time. I think we are going to be able to think about how come not en te kritiseer, jy het er as om handen te vat en buiten te staan. En ek moet um, sê, en ek wil graag sê, dat ons by Bosveld is baie bevoorrecht om een beheerlichaam te hee wat die school 100% ondersteun en iemand soos Frikkie te hee wat vir ons kan help en bystaan en uh, kan help om die ouders te motiveer om deel te wees van, van hierdie nieuwe normaal waarmee ons graag een school wil voor en toe vat. Um, ja, nee, ek denk so, dit, die groe ding is maar net uh, die wil om te wil probeer Dit is die belangrike een van my om dan voor in toe te gaan. Dankie, Rian. Dankie, Loukie. Ek weet nie of enig van die ander sprekers iets wil bysit nie. Ek sien ons uh, hoofuitvoerende beamte sy hand is op. Uh, vir Paul Renken vraag, just please bring in our CEO, uh, if, if possible, uh, Paul. Uh, I just want to say a big thank you to the schools that number one are doing something. And I think there's a ton of stories like that. Uh, we did some research and about 75 to 80% of our schools reported in the survey that they continued with some sense of learning and teaching in the hard lockdown. So the creativity is big. Uh, yeah, so I want to give a good big kudos to them and uh, not just the panelists today, but say thank you for doing something. Jylle het iets gedoen en ek denk dit is kritisch. Um, normal, new normal is still normal. It's just new. Uh, we, we don't have tomorrow in our hands in any case, but we've got to prepare for something. And if we've got a target of 2030, I think we're, we're looking towards something in the future and not to 1980 when I did school. So um, that's, that's a thought from my side. Meneer Kolditz, uh, thank you for joining us again on Tech Talk. I feel honored. Enige gedagtes van jou of asjeblief. Thanks, Rian, and thanks, Paul, for uh, letting me into this meeting. Um, I just wanted to say from my side um, a very big thank you for our leaders in our schools for taking this great leap into the future, which was very necessary. Um, and I can assure you that um, in where I'm sitting, I'm studying... Uh, schooling systems all across the globe and I have some context um, overseas and what you have done is a trendsetter for schools all over the world. So, you have done a very good job in terms of international best practices, good practices with development. Um, I have two questions that in England in the school is, they are in a very good school, but they are far after what you have done in this stadium already done. En dat is ongelooflijk. En dan uh, wou ik daarom ook net die geleentheid gehad het om verdoep in die gezicht te kijken. Ek het ook kom een baie lang pad, so doek skakel asjeblief jou video aan, laat ek jou in die gezicht kan kyk en hallo sê, en baie dankie vir die leiding wat jy ook geneem het. Jy sal onthou dat ons uh, jare terug, baie jare terug, to Dr. Cassius Lubisi, wat nou die directeur-generaal is in die presidentse kantoor nog, Het jyk directeur-generaal van onderwijs was daar in um, die ou kantore van die departement vergader het en onze voorlegging aan hom gedoen het, wat jy eindelijk gedoen het, met betrekking tot FET. Nou, dit is seker 15 jaar gelede uh, omtrent, uh, waar uh, doop al reeds op die voorgrond was met betrekking tot die ontwikkeling van curriculum en nieuwe ideeën um, in die uh, verder onderwijs en ontwikkelingsfase is so baie geluk uh, met die samenstelling van die program, Rian en Paul, congratulations to the two of you, and well done, well done to all our schools, our principals, our school governing body members, deputy principal, for taking these wonderful innovative steps. Thanks Rian, thanks Paul. Thank you. Thank you for, for that input, uh, Paul. I really appreciate it. From my side, the last word of thanks is, is not just for what you did, but the fact that you share it with other schools. I think the school community needs to pull together 
Um, I always say um, as, as a FETSAS member and not necessarily as, as a parent at my own school, uh, the neighboring school is not the enemy. Bad education is the enemy. Uh, and, and yes, there's, there's good competition on the rugby field or on the sports field or choir or a stage or something. But the real enemy is bad education and standing still uh, is equal to walking backwards. So we've got to move forward. So from our side, thank you to Dup, Sonia, Mark, uh, Loki, Fricky, Arthur, uh, and the team that joined us today. Thanks for sharing what you did and uh, inspiring us today. I'm going to hand over to Paul Rinkin uh, just to close the session. But from our side, thanks so much. Uh, Paul, over to you. Thanks. Thanks very much. And thank you, everybody, for your involvement. Um, I have to say, it's a, I'll say this carefully, the recording's running. It's a hell of a proud moment to be involved with schools like this that actually take these big steps forward. Um, you know, this, this path that myself and Rian started with online stuff, if we call it that, two and a half years ago, and we're now sitting at a place where schools are benefiting hugely from it, not because of our doing. I'm just immensely proud that other people have taken up the opportunity. And yeah, we've been forced to do it, but it's really great. Um, it's probably... To me, one of my proudest moments of being involved in FEDSAS, that schools anywhere in the country can actually take this step forward, that they aren't sitting back and waiting for it. They're actually running to it in that process. But before I get too emotional, let me just finish off the whole process. Um, there's a, a run of our webinars coming up. Um, we've got a few coming through. And those of you that are mathematicians will see that the numbers down the side aren't sequential. It's because we have got Tech Talk Tuesdays that are being thrown in between there, where I really like this format. I think it was really good that we get people involved that are innovative, that are pushing the boundary without waiting for it to be documented and recorded and all that sort of stuff. We're actually going ahead and doing those processes. But that's just a snap view of where we're going forward with the webinars coming up. Um, and then... Um, just a reminder of our newsletter. I did drop the link in the um, chat box, so you can pick that up. You can just pick that up there from that side. Um, you'll be able to pick up the link in the news box, um, and you'll be able to pick up any of that information that's on the, the e-magazine, which is an incredible um, publication with a whole lot of information really worthwhile going through on that side. Um, and then finally, a quick just our provincial managers again, just in case you need their details. By now, you should all have them, but there are new people coming on board all the time. So please pick up those details, get hold of our provincial managers. And then finally, I'll hand over to Rian just to do the last farewells. Thank you, um, the folks involved that have come on board. Really great to share that information. Um, and I will reiterate it. It's a proud moment to be involved in schools like this that have actually actually done the things. They haven't sat back and waited for someone else to give them a model, to give them a template. They've actually just stepped forward and bravely stepped forward in that process from there. Rian, last word over to you. Yeah, I'm just going to say, let's think 2030. Uh, it's not just the NDP that focuses on 2030, but we're already teaching the generation that finishes school in 2030. So let's create that world for them. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to the panel members. Uh, short notice, some of them, and, and the preparation and sharing. So from my side, uh, see you next week. Uh, Tech Talk at 2. We'll be talking coding. And uh, we, we might have a surprise next week with uh, talking with a high-profile uh, economist uh, somewhere during the week about the school economy and how that has changed. Because tech costs money, but the opportunity cost might be a little bit more. So let's, let's have a look at that. Thank you for joining us. Take care and uh, go well. Goed van julle. Dank jy vir uh, al die boodskapies van danksegging. Ek sien dat dit vir baie van ons mense iets beteken. So, uh, sien julle weer. Tot ziens. Okay, bye bye.